Why are people having trouble with sleep? So what my aim is, is to give you an understanding of sleep. I want to show you what happens when you sleep. And when you understand what happens when you sleep, you begin to, you begin to have a knowledge on the important times to sleep and why. There's a little tiny gland in the base of the brain and it's called the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is about the size of a, maybe a, a, la, a macadamia nut. And it's right in the base of your brain. And the pineal gland releases four hormones every night, but only in certain hours. Huge problem today is insomnia. Huge problem. Why? Why are people having trouble with sleep? Dr. Barbara O'Neill, a well-known health educator and naturopath. She emphasizes the importance of addressing the root causes of insomnia, such as stress, poor diet, and lack of exercise. Going to bed early improves overall health by enhancing sleep quality, boosting energy levels, and supporting better mental and physical well-being. Dr. O'Neill advocates for natural approaches to improving sleep, including maintaining a regular sleep schedule, avoiding stimulants like caffeine, ensuring proper nutrition, and incorporating relaxation techniques such as deep breathing or herbal remedies to promote restful sleep. Hello students! In this video, we'll discuss the important insights from Dr. Barbara O'Neill on sleep problems, particularly insomnia. She'll share natural approaches and lifestyle changes to help you achieve better sleep and improve your overall well-being. We all know that sleep is essential for our bodies to function well, she emphasizes that for your body to perform at its best, you need at least eight hours of sleep. We need to be sleeping eight hours a night, eight hours. According to Dr. Barbara O'Neill, consistently sleeping eight hours a night is crucial for maintaining optimal health, as it allows the body sufficient time to repair, rejuvenate, and function properly. She emphasizes that eight hours of sleep is not just a recommendation but a vital requirement for the body's natural healing processes. On the other hand, Getting only 6 hours of sleep can lead to various negative effects, including impaired cognitive function, weakened immune response, increased stress levels, and a higher risk of chronic health conditions. She reveals studies showing that consistently sleeping less, such as 6 hours a night, can lead to serious health consequences, including cognitive decline, increased stress, and a higher risk of diseases. Dr. Matthew Walker, they did a lot of experiments, especially on students, they had 20 students. 10 of the students had six hours sleep a night, the other 10 had eight hours sleep a night. Three months later, they tested them, and the ones that had eight hours sleep a night, I think it was 40% more knowledge they retained compared to the ones having six hours sleep a night. Dr. Matthew Walker showed that 10 nights of six hours sleep a night, 50% less cognitive performance and 50% less physical performance. And he said the danger is you don't even realize that you're lacking. He also showed that there are more accidents due to sleep deprivation than alcohol. Sleeping only six hours a night can be dangerous for your health because it doesn't provide enough time for your body to complete essential restorative processes. This lack of sleep can lead to impaired cognitive function, making it harder to concentrate, learn, and remember things. It also weakens the immune system, making you more susceptible to illnesses. Chronic sleep deprivation can increase the risk of serious health issues such as heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and mental health disorders like anxiety and depression. 10 nights of 6 hours sleep a night doubles your risk of mental illness. And 6 hours sleep a night, the person doesn't even know they're not functioning properly because they actually feel alright. What a deception is that? Next, it's important to understand why the sleep window from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. is considered the ideal sleep schedule. Can we rest at any time of the day, or does timing really matter? Dr. Barbara O'Neill addresses this by emphasizing that the optimal sleep period is from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. However, to grasp why this is so effective, we need to explore the differences between REM and NREM sleep. Dr. O'Neill explains these sleep stages and how timing impacts their benefits. According to Dr. Barbara O'Neill and REM sleep, this stage is crucial for physical restoration and memory consolidation. During NREM sleep, 
your brain processes and transfers memories from short-term storage in the hippocampus to long-term storage in the cortex. This phase also helps in clearing out negative emotions, provided you've resolved any personal issues or grudges. This phase is characterized by rapid eye movements, vivid dreaming, and heightened brain activity. REM sleep is essential for emotional regulation, creative thinking, and problem solving. It typically occurs later in the sleep cycle, with each REM period getting longer as the night progresses. During REM sleep, your brain works on integrating and organizing information gathered throughout the day, which supports learning and creativity. Dr. Barbara O'Neill explains that the 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. sleep window is ideal because it aligns with the natural cycle of NREM and REM sleep. Early in the night, NREM sleep dominates, allowing your brain to clean up and organize information. As the night progresses, REM sleep increases, supporting creativity and emotional processing. This schedule ensures a balanced sleep cycle, optimizing memory and emotional. Now, what are the risks of going to bed after midnight? Many people stay up late, hoping to extend their productive hours, but this can backfire. The extra hours spent awake might disrupt your sleep cycle, reduce the quality of your rest, and interfere with the natural balance of NREM and REM sleep, leading to less effective memory consolidation and emotions processing. I was, what, I was reading one research paper that said that, that regular late nights has a similar effect on the body to alcoholism and drug addiction because it's not allowing the body to revive and recharge every night. There are some things that can stimulate the release of these and there are some things that can inhibit. And we're going to look at Sustain Me and I'm going to show you how the basic principles of Sustain Me, these laws of health, how they can influence sleep. As we discussed, NREM sleep, which happens earlier in the night, is essential for clearing out the previous day's memories. If you stay up late, your brain misses out on this important phase, leaving less room for new memories and potentially causing brain fog. Dr. Barbara O'Neill highlights four important hormones released during sleep. What are these hormones and how come they're only released in that time? It's to do with the, uh, the circadian rhythm. You've heard of the circadian rhythm? And our circadian rhythm is basically set by uh, light and dark signal, exposure in the eyes, the moon, the tides, it all has to do with this. Light and dark signals are fed through the optic nerve to a control centre in the brain where the, where the um, body clock is situated and the body clock communicates with the pineal gland. The release of certain hormones during sleep is closely tied to the circadian rhythm, which is your body's natural internal clock. Dr. Barbara O'Neill explains that the circadian rhythm is primarily influenced by light and dark signals that your eyes receive from the environment. When your eyes detect light, these signals are sent through the optic nerve to a control center in the brain, where your body clock is located. This body clock helps regulate various functions, including the release of hormones. One key player in this process is the pineal gland, a small gland in the brain that produces melatonin, the hormone responsible for regulating sleep. The pineal gland is highly sensitive to light and dark cues. When it's dark, the gland produces more melatonin, signaling your body that it's time to sleep. Conversely, exposure to light reduces melatonin production, signaling that it's time to be awake. And that's why it is released at these times. What are these hormones? One is serotonin, that's your mood hormone. And if the children have a late night, what are they like in the morning? They're not happy chappies, and neither are the parents. <laughs> melatonin is called the fix and rejuvenate nighttime hormone. Melatonin is the one that's responsible for the increase in healing, rest, rejuvenation in those hours. Another hormone is arginine vasotocin. An arginine vasotocin is a hormone that puts us into a deep sleep. 
And arginine vasotocin is our natural painkiller. So if, if you have pain of any type and you go to bed early, your natural painkiller will kick in. But there's a side effect. Using the natural painkiller, which the body will automatically do if there's pain of any type in the body, using that natural painkiller, there will be a, a waste from it. So the next night when you go to bed, if that waste hasn't been eliminated, then, then the pineal gland won't release another dose of arginine vasotocin. But if you exercise in the day, if you do that high intensity interval training in the day, you will always get a perspiration built happening and that's releasing the waste. And that's why exercise in the day is vital in maintenance of pain of any type in the body because it helps to release your natural painkiller every night. According to Dr. Barbara O'Neill, exercise is essential for maintaining overall health and vitality. She emphasizes that regular physical activity helps improve circulation, strengthen the heart, and support the body's detoxification processes. Exercise also plays a crucial role in managing stress, boosting mood, and enhancing mental clarity. And that also puts you into a deep sleep. The other hormone is epithalamin. An epithalamin is a hormone that increases learning capacity. So to increase your ability to learn and retain, go to bed early and get your epithalamin. Epithalamin also slows down aging. According to Dr. Barbara O'Neill, getting eight hours of quality sleep is essential for maintaining optimal health. She also emphasizes the importance of regular exercise and eating nutritious food to enhance your overall well-being. By focusing on these key areas, sleep, exercise, and diet, you can improve your physical and mental health, leading to a longer, healthier life. So, students, that's the video about Dr. Barbara O'Neill's insights on the importance of sleep. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyed learning how crucial sleep, exercise, and good nutrition are for a healthy life. Thanks for watching. Well, the hours before midnight are worth two after, and I think the pineal gland secretions show that. So if you have eight hours from 10, so from midnight till 8 a.m., you're missing out on half of your uh, pineal gland secretions and you're also missing out on some of the cleaning in the courier system. So those hours before midnight are very important. It is true.